All right, I think there's four questions on the warm up today. I'll get it presented for you guys to work on for about seven or eight minutes, I think. It should be enough time. Oh, man. All right, here is our warm up for the day. Number one. Which operation would you use to solve for y? So would you add, subtract, multiply, or divide to solve for y? Number two, solve the equation, figure out what x equals. Number three, the yearly rent on an apartment is $7,631.76. How much would rent be for one month? So for a whole year, you're paying $7,600. How much is it for one month? And then number four, what is a number that is greater than negative five, but less than negative four? Okay, so you got to think that one through. I suggest drawing a number line for number four to give yourself an idea of where they are and what numbers could work for that. So take about seven minutes, seven or eight minutes to work on this one, please. Go ahead. What is your number three? You have... A whole year worth of rent, and you're trying to figure out how much it costs you to spend one month. How many days in a month? It doesn't matter how many days in a month. You pay the same amount every month. Okay, when you pay rent, it's the same amount of money each month. Well, my mom never tells me that gives me, so I don't know how to do that. That's why I'm telling you right now. When you pay rent, it's the same amount of money each month. So each oh, you're going to put 12 off. Oh, there we go. Okay. I'm getting around. I don't know how grown ups can pay their bills. They're so hard. I don't have comments for that one. Okay, be working on this, please. Why does work even exist? Because they have to pay for the rent. Well, why does that even exist? Because people can have reason to lose money. So why does money exist? I don't have to lose money. I have to lose money.
Okay, about four more minutes. So we're going to do about two more minutes. All right, I'm going to get this centered on the screen. All right, so we can see all of that, correct? We should. Okay, let's go ahead and start with number one. On number one, we did not need to solve it. We just need to figure out which operation you would use to solve it. So we have a positive four here that we need to get rid of. Which is like adding four. What's the opposite of adding four? Subtracting. So to get rid of it, you're just going to subtract. I mean, yeah, but there's questions on the test and stuff that say what operation. So you got to make sure you say subtract. Um, question four is asking a number greater than negative five and less than negative four. Where is that guy? Number two, we need to solve. We have 46 equals x plus 12. We need to get the x all by itself and figure out what x equals. So we can't do anything on the left side with the 46, but we need to get rid of this adding 12. What's the opposite of adding 12? Subtract how many? 12. That will cancel out and you're left with x. 
On this one, if I subtract 12 on one side of my equation, what do I have to do on the other? Subtract it on the other side. What is 46 minus 12? 34. X equals 34. And does that make sense? If we were to plug it back in, 46 equals 34 plus 12. Does that work? Yes. Yep. You can put a check mark next to it if you want to. Okay, so you can always check your answer too that you got. And then our next one, I think this is the one I took to see if you guys up. For a whole year, you pay $7,631.76 well, $7, on your rent. That's for the whole year. It wants to figure out how much you pay per month. How many months are there in a year? 12. So we need to take our number and divide it by 12 to figure it out. So we have 7,631.76. Before we start, we do have a desk, and what do I need to do with it? Bring it straight up. You don't need to move it or anything. Just bring it straight up. Now we divide. Does 12 go into 7? 12 into 7? No. But it does go into 76. How many times? Not 8 times. 6 times. And you get 72. Subtract and get 4. Then you drop down your 3. Does 12 go into 43? 3 times. 3 times. And you get 36. Subtract and get what? 5. 7. Right? Bring down your 1. 71. Does 12 go into 71? Mm -hmm. yeah. How many times? 5. Oh, is that what you're saying? 5? Yeah. 5 times. Uh, and you get 60. Subtract and you get 11. Then we can drop down our 7. Does 12 go into 117? Yep. How many times? Nine. Nine. What do you get underneath here? What's 12 times 9? What am I? 108. When you subtract, what do you get? Nine. Well, you get 9. Drop down your 6. And 96, does 12 go into 96? Eight. Eight times. And it goes in evenly, so you're done there. So every month, how much money should you pay so that you can live in your house? $635.98. And a couple of you guys were asking if that's a lot of money. That's like... Um, it's a decent... It depends on where you live. Like, if you live in New York City and you live, like, on Times Square, like one of the most popular places, that would be, like, the size of a closet. That's how much that would get you. You would not be able to afford a place in New York City for this much money. But if you live uh, maybe somewhere in Phoenix, Winslow might have a monthly rent of about this much. So it really depends on where you live. So this is not a huge rent. It's, pretty, it's kind of a common one that you'll see. Um, it also depends on how many bedrooms you have, how many bathrooms, if you have a garage, a house versus an apartment, your monthly rent will change depending on where you live and what sort of house or apartment you're buying or I renting. If you, if you build your own house and you got to spend the money to build the house, but you don't pay rent to live in your own house. Um, yeah. All right. And our last one, number four here. We need a number that is greater than negative five but less than negative four. So what two numbers are they in between? Well, what two numbers are they in between first? You're in between negative four and negative five. You need to choose any number that's in between negative four and negative five. Negative four and a half works. Charlie, what did you get? Positive or negative? Good. As long as it's negative, you're good. You could do negative 4.1. Negative 4.2, negative 4.3. Anything in between negative 4 and negative 5 is an answer to that question. Okay? All right. So, that's our warm-up for the day. We have a set of notes that we're going to do that's probably not posted yet. It might be. We'll see. So. Okay.
Okay. So under math, it's not posted. Let me go get it posted. Here, and present my screen, and it should be posted now. I had it assigned to you guys. So if you reload your Google Classroom and go down to math, you should have a new assignment called Solving Inequalities Notes. So yesterday we talked about inequalities and what they are, the differences between them. We added a couple new inequalities with greater than or equal to and less than or equal to. Now we're going to learn how to solve one. So we're going to throw in some variables and talk about how to solve these things. Yeah. Yep. All right. I'm going to move this down. Let's have you guys get that slideshow opened up. Google Slides. Okay, Google Slides, have that open. Um, I'm not going to present it at all today because we are going to be some, do some typing in it. Um, the typing shouldn't be too much. It should work out all right with the less than and stuff. So I'm going to zoom into about 100. Yesterday we talked about different types of inequalities. So on our first slide, we're going to identify what these inequalities are that we had talked about yesterday. So let's go to slide number two here. We have what are each of the following symbols? And you can click on it to be able to type your answer in. If you'd like to, you can get rid of the, the um, dotted line there so you can type. And we need to decide what these inequalities are. I'm not going to say them because it'll just give it away immediately. So what is number one? The alligator mouth. He said alligator mouth. That's not right. What? No. It's not alligator mouth. Less than? Good. This is less than. Yes, but that's second grade stuff. We are in sixth grade now, Ms. Austin. We say it correctly. I know. This is a less than symbol. Okay, good job, guys. This is less than. What is our next one? Greater than or equal to? Good, greater than or equal to. Remember that line underneath means that you're just going to include the number as well. It's equal to that number or bigger. Awesome. Number three here? Greater than. Good, greater than. And finally, our last one. Less than or equal to. Awesome, thank you. Less than or equal to. Perfect. I'm going to go uncapitalize this T because it's bothering me. Okay. So we have our four inequalities here. Less than. Any number needs to be less than whatever is given to you. Greater than or equal to. The number is bigger or it equals that exact number. Greater than, it just has to be bigger than it. And then less than or equal to it can be equal to that number that's given or less than it. Okay, so those are our four inequalities. We're going to use those instead of equal signs for the next couple of days. Are equal signs inequalities? Equal signs are not inequalities. Are they? That's a good question. Well, they're equal to, sir. I know. That's why sometimes I don't know the answer because you try and trick me. I, I don't try to trick you. <laughs> I try to have a conversation with them. I would say that an equal sign is not an inequality because inequality in its nature, in the word, is not equal. So even though sometimes you have four equal, two, if you have three of like an equal sign, then well, they're not equal. 
No. Okay. Or an equation. Yes. So an equal sign is not an inequality because it's they're not equal to each other. Yes. Because you're assuming that it's not equal to. It's you know, greater than, but greater than or equal to implies it could be this exact number or something bigger. So if you use greater than, it just means it's not that number. Anything bigger is your answer. Yeah. Yep. All right. Let's look at slide number three. This is kind of the instructions for what we're going to do to practice solving inequalities. And inequalities look exactly like the equations that we've been doing, um, where you have x plus 4 equals 10. And we know, OK, we need to subtract on both sides to solve it. Inequalities are the same exact thing. They just have the inequality symbol instead. So you solve them the exact same way. So we've kind of already done this. The only thing is we now just have inequalities in our answers instead of an equal sign. OK, so what we're going to do is solve them exactly like we would solve an equation by isolating the variable on one side by using inverse operations. You guys remember what inverse means? What does inverse mean? Opposite. That's a good question. What does isolate mean as well? Say again? To separate, to get along. Okay, so there's a little bit of uh, more information there. Because vocabulary is important in math. Got to know what words mean. So we're going to practice this a few times together on the Google Slides. And then we're going to try a couple on your own. Because we have been solving equations with equal signs for a couple of weeks. And you guys are pretty good at it. So just putting in the inequalities is just one slight difference. And we'll talk about that difference. Okay? It's really the only difference is your answers. Solving them is the exact same way. So let's look at slide number four. It says to fill out the chart. So our first slide on the left says to solve the inequality. We have x plus 3 is greater than 7. Yeah, I was actually going to do it behind me myself, and I can do it behind me instead. I'm like the Vanna White of math. Okay, let's make sure that you might need to write a little lower so that the people online can see it. And with black. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There you go. All right. So is gonna write behind me as we go. Which alligator over side? It's not an alligator. It's greater than. Oh, okay. So x plus three is greater than seven. We need to start by solving this first of all. So I'm gonna hit the enter sign. Oops. Um, what? Okay, I have it centered, but turn off the center thing. What do we need to do? Oh my goodness. Hold on. So if we're getting something alone, I know you guys probably talked a lot about like the balancing the scale and where to separate your equation. But now, which symbol am I dividing it between? How am I going to divide this uh, expression or inequality? Where am I going to cut my scale? The upside down T. The upside down T. Is the greater than sign. Yes, so I'm going to so. cut a line through that, upside down T. Yes, now so. I got a little balance scale. Perfect. So split your inequality where you need to. It still goes between the inequality sign, just like it would go between the equal sign. So now, if we look back at our definition of how to solve an inequality, we said isolate using the inverse operation. And Elijah, you pointed out that inverse means, who can remind us? Opposite. opposite. It's the opposite again. So what's the opposite of addition happening over here? Subtract. What am I going to subtract? Seven? Three. Three. OK. Now what do I do with it? I didn't. OK. Why do they cancel out each other? Because they're opposites. If I have three dollars and I spend the three dollars, whatever I left with, I just have nothing, right? 
That's why it works to cancel it out every time. 7 minus 3 is 4. X equals 4, is that my answer? No. What did we say we're solving? Yeah, careful. It's not X equals 4. X, X doesn't equal 4 anymore. It's not equal. X equals um, greater than or equal to 4. Not equal to because we don't have the symbol. We keep the same symbol. Whatever was in our inequality, it just carries down. So x is greater than 4. So what are some possible solutions or possible values of numbers for x? If I know x is a number greater than 4, actually, I want more than four solutions. I want one from each and every single one of you. <laughs> yes, I'll type them out. Seven. Okay, that's greater than four. Good. What's another number greater than four? Charlie. Five. Five. Good. Okay, what's the number greater than four? Uh, that's less than four. Give me any number bigger than four. Eight. Eight. Perfect. Missy, what's the number greater than four? Six. Perfect. Yeah. Yoshi, what's the number greater than four? Nine. Nine. Uh, Juliana, what's the number greater than four? Ten. Ten. <laughs> Wait, are we saying Alex, like single digits? Um, or eight, eight can be any number greater than four. Oh. I don't know why you guys are keeping it so limited. Elijah, what's the number greater than four? Hundred. Hundred. That's greater than four. Uh, okay, Twenty-one. Huh? Thirteen. Thirteen. Twenty-one. A thousand. Hey, Miss Dawson is going to keep going. 586. Now, before she keeps going, can I have 4.1? 4, 4 and 1 tenth? Is that greater than 4? Yeah. 4 and 1 tenth is greater than 4. Right? 4.1? So anything greater than 4 is an answer. I know I wrote a lot of solutions on here. You do not need to write every single one. Just make sure you have 4. Okay, make sure you have at least four. Anybody online have any other ones that they want to add to this list? I can write them down as you, you can type them in the chat. But we can add as many to that list as you want to. Anything greater than four. Oh, I missed the thing. 64. 64 is awesome. Anything else? Greater than four. Wait, what? Okay, I thought you said 26. 43.6. 300. Okay. Where is it 21, Olivia? Okay, so you guys see that it can go on and on and on. If I was Great, Olivia. Olivia. 21 is greater. Awesome. Miss Jones owes me more than $4. I'm not specifying that she owes me exactly $4, but it could be any of these amounts. Preferably the a thousand one. <laughs> I don't I don't know myself a thousand dollars. Uh uh. Or if I spent greater than four dollars on Christmas presents, did I spend four dollars on Christmas presents? I did at least four dollars in one cent. It's greater than four dollars. It's not a thousand dollars. Woo! Listen, Black Friday right. got me. It did not get me that hard. <laughs> but um, it could be anything more than four. Four dollars and one cent. Well, if I wanted to get real crazy with it, if we weren't talking about money, I know sometimes you guys like to be like super extra about stuff. I was thinking about it. Four and one million. Okay, I don't know. I did not count my place values. I don't know how many place values. But as long as it's not four point zero repeating infinity, as long as there's some other digit at after the decimal. Yeah. Four and one ten million. If even I added a one way later, way to, later on, it's still greater than four. Yep. It's still greater. Don't do that to Miss Jones. Don't yep. do that to yourself. Please do not. Don't be too extra about it. But this just goes to show there's so many numbers when you have inequalities that work because you're always going to be asked what are possible solutions, and sometimes they might even give you multiple choice like which of these are possible solutions you will see that probably throw you things like that oh i didn't even know that Woo! telekinesis yeah like, I, woo! I put it on the independent practice this week but they'll give you stuff like that that you're gonna be like no that's 
for just a bunch of zeros like nah but it could be any of these as far as random as they are as far away from four as they are or as close to four as they are if it's greater than the number you're given it's a possible solution Oh, you ready to do the next one too? Yeah. Okay. Sure. <laughs> Miss Dawson is going to keep writing behind me. Let's look at slide number four. Or five. Sorry. Slide number five. This time, our inequality is 4m is less than or equal to 12. Less than or equal to Good. Let me make sure that we can see that. Can you guys see that on my? Awesome. Good. Okay. So. One of the things that we got to make sure we remember is what operation is happening between 4 and M. Yes. Let her finish the question. Yes. Listen to the question. You guys did say answer. But the main thing is we got to remember what is the operation between 4 and M. Is it being added, subtracted, multiplied, or divided? These are being multiplied. Little tiny multiplication in between. So that's a big thing. I'm going to guess that a lot of times... With multiplication going further than six grades, it's going to be represented as just a number and a variable together, mm -hmm. or it's going to be the dot. You're probably not going to see as many X's anymore, just because you're going to get more and more into algebra where they use X as a variable, not as your operation. I'm just guessing and trying to prepare you guys for the future. So think of multiplication as this or the little dot. Yep. Continue. Is this in the future? No. no, we just have done this math before in our schooling, so yeah. we know that it's coming. And you, you very guys. rarely will see it as an X anymore. Yep. All right, now the answers to some of the questions that you get, or um, the question that some of you guys are trying to answer is how do we split this so that we have two sides of our inequality? It's between the 4 and the M, right? Yeah, between the 4 and the M. No. No? Where do I put what? it? Good. Okay. Got to be in between the less than or equal to. And we can't type it online. So just if you're drawing it or writing it out, that's fine. I'll continue typing online as we do this. So Ms. Daphne will be doing it on the board behind me like she has been. Okay. So now what? We have our upside down T. How do we solve it? I solve it by doing the inverse. Good. We got it. How do we divide, Michaela? No, it's not Michaela. It's Maddie. Maddie. Michaela's online. That's right. I just she can answer too, though, if she wants to. Maddie, Maddie what do you, like, why do we divide? We divide by four. Why do we divide by four? Because we're multiplying by four, so we're going to divide by four. No. Wait till we solve the problem. Then we'll get to possible solutions. If I divide four by four, what is four divided by four? Zero. One. one. It's one M. Do I have to put the one? No. Can I put the one? Yeah. Does it change it? No. Okay. So I'll have one M or M is equal to 12. Right? No. no. Oh, okay. What do I do next? Keep the same sign. Keep the same sign. That's right. I have to divide by four over here. Because if we think of it as a way we're balancing things out, what is 12 divided by four? Three. Three. So I have one M, I have three on this side of my inequality. So is M equal to three? No. No. I hear one no, no. kind of like a moo. Uh, Charlie, yes or no? <laughs> After you answer the question, what's the sign in between? Is it going to be an equal? <laughs> What's the symbol? Either equal or less. Either equal or less. I have to keep the exact same inequality symbol. I can't just all of a sudden say it's equal to. Because I'm saying 4 times the number is less than 12. Now, if m or 1m is less than or equal to 3, I'm going to be extra. Love you, Miss Jones. Sorry. That's okay. I want each of you to all give me a value that applies. Give me possible solutions for M being less than or equal to 3. If you're online, you can type out some answers too, and I'll get it on there as well. Right. Huh? 
That would be less than three. And negative four. Negative, negative four. Less than three. Juliana? Two. That is less than three. Two. One. 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 Alex, give me a number less than three. Negative one. Negative one. Negative so one. Do you guys know that negative numbers would be similar? Okay. Yeah. Zero. Zero is less than three. Uh, give me a number less than four. Or less than three. Three. Good. You Why can... is it three? Why can we use three? Skyler is totally correct. Why could it be three? Because it can be equal to. It can be that exact number or anything less. Could it be 3.00001? Yeah. No. Nope. Not less than. But Skyler, yes. Because it has the or equal to, it can be that exact number. Good job. I was waiting for somebody to say that. Uh, Juliana. No. Liliana. Liliana. I always get you and your sister confused. Liliana, what's the number less than three? Any number less than it. Negative two? Negative two. Good. Missy, what's the number negative less than three? Negative what? No. Negative nine. Negative nine is good. Okay. Can I do decimals and fractions, guys? Yeah. Yeah. What's a fraction or a decimal number that's less than three? Two point nine. That's less than three. Go to the next one and fill out the solution. What else? What's another decimal or fraction one? Not 4.1. 4.1 is greater. We need to make sure. Negative 2.5. So even though 3 is pretty close to 0, I see a lot of you guys caught on to a lot of the negative solution. So when you have a positive number and you're trying to find solutions less than that, it's probably a smart approach to say, I know any negative number is going to be less than that positive number. Right? Negatives are always less than. If my bank account is less than $3 in it, I could be anywhere in the negative and still have under $3. I could be negative $1,000. I could be negative $1,000. I'm not. You do not want to be at negative $1,000, but you can be. No, we're going to do finish up these two with Ms. Offney because she's doing great. Okay, well, thank you. We're going to still finish it up with Ms. Offney. We make such a good team. We do. All right, let's move on to our next one because we only have about 20 minutes. Just so, you know. so, slide number six. Also, on this slide, I highlighted the three just so that you guys keep in mind that the three is a possible solution. So, three, it can be equal to three or less than it. So, I highlighted just as like a three is a possible solution. Okay? Let's look at slide number six. This one we have. X minus five is greater, sorry, is less than eight. Yes, Alex. Very close. X. So X minus, minus five, five is less than eight. Less than eight? Is it or equal to? Oh, just less than. Am I okay in the spacing? Um. Yes, you're good on spacing. Okay. Thank you, guys. All right, I'm done talking a ton. I've been extra. Uh, Bubbly today. So you walk me through it. Give me the first step. Only the first step. Feel on. Um, upside down T. Upside down T. Where? Um, on the less than thing. On the less than thing. I appreciate that you said less than and not alligator. <laughs> All right. Who can pick it up off of Kalon's answer and give me the next step? Elijah. Um, you add five. Add five. Where? Negative five and okay. I add five here. Why do I add five here? Because don't just say because it's the opposite. Why is what is the logic between doing the opposite? Body? It gets me the answer, but if I have negative five dollars and Miss Jones gives me the five dollars that she owes me, where are we at? Does she still owe me? 
Am I feeling dead? No, it cancels out. We're even. All right, it neutralizes it. I'm at zero. My bank account says zero. So it zeroes it out. So if I add x plus zero, I just have x. Okay, now what's my next step? Somebody go off of what Elijah told us to do other than Shaylon or Elijah. Juliana. Add five to the eight. Add five to the eight. Thank you for reminding me because, you know, I get distracted. Okay? <laughs> Oh, sorry, I'm supposed to be typing this. Okay, when I do 8 plus 5 further, what do I get? Uh, 8 plus 5. I didn't call on you. 14. Plus, go back one. 13. 13. Okay, good. 8 plus 5 is 13. Now, what, Marty? Okay, my sign just carries down. X is less than 13. What are some possible solutions? Yoshi, what's the number less than 13? Is it less than 13? How much will she? 12 is a number less than 13. 10? No, because it doesn't have this. Good, it cannot be 13 on this one. There's no equal to, so it just has to be anything less than 13. 12.009. And if you're online, you guys can throw out some answers too, and I'll type them out. Juliana? Huh? Negative 7. Remember, if you're going less than a number, huh? Six. Good, 6. Good, 6. Negative 18. 110. Fraction or decimal or both? Yeah, we got six. Six. So I could have 0 0.1 or I could have a fraction. One tenth. So I'm hearing a lot more participation at this point of you guys shouting out possible wow. solutions. And that's awesome. That means a lot of you guys are catching on to possible values. I've given you some kind of basic real world example of somebody owing somebody money or somebody spending at least this much or needing to raise this much. Say right now we're in the world of virtual and digital learning, oh, right? Say that you guys need to save at least $200 for a new laptop, right? You're talking about you can save exactly $200 if you go up and buy a laptop for $200. You only need to save $200, but you can save more than that. Huh? What do you mean 19? Would 19 be an answer? 19 less than 13. No. So no, 19. no. You can do negative, negative 19. 19, yes. But not a positive 19. Positive 19. 21. 21, good. Negative 14. Negative 14. Did you guys just say the same one? 13, yeah. Oh, I thought you guys said the exact same thing. Negative like, 13. Wow. It can't be exactly 13, but it could be uh, 12. Negative 9. Negative 10. Negative 10. Perfect. Negative 10. So sometimes it's only going to ask you for four. Miss Jones probably won't be too, too mad if you guys give her a longer list. Because yeah, that shows that you understand it. Uh, she might be a little upset if you can't give her mm -hmm. at least the four. Um, but again, like the last one we just did with or equal to, when you guys see multiple choice questions, and it says which of these choices has all possible solutions to this inequality, it's probably going to include that 13 to see if you know that that equal to sign means that it could be that exact solution, right? But if you had the less than and 13 was in the mix, you know, no, it's not that because I don't have that extra line. Whoa. Good. Yeah. Ready for our last one? We'll do one more and then we'll finish up here. We'll do a lot of practice tomorrow. So we'll do one more to finish up our notes. This one got typed a little bit weird because it wouldn't do a fraction. So Ms. Dauphine writes that she's going to write it correctly with the fraction. So x divided by 4 is greater than or equal to 24, or sorry, 6. That's fine. Okay, x divided by 4 is greater than or equal to 6. Somebody give me just the first step. What's my first step? What do I do? Marty, upside down T where? Uh, I can make this an upside down T. 
right through my inequality symbol. Look at that. Directly. Is funny. He's finally funny. Hey, he's he does bigger funny. I got my character back. I got my energy, my pep yeah. in my step, and plenty of stuff in today. You're welcome. Oh, no, no. All right, what's my next step, Elijah? One times four times four. Why would I do four times four? Because, um, because it cancels out each other. Okay, so you're right. I would do times four. I'm going to do the bubble or the circle. But if I'm doing a little thought bubble over here, Very this hard is really know. saying one fourth times four over one. And I get four fourths which is equal to one whole. So I'm keeping my one whole x. These cancel out. I have one x, or just x. Let's see this on your personal preference. But I don't have more than my one only or less than one x. All right, so you're going to give me my next step, Kaylon. Um, um, multiply, multiply four by the other side. Six times four is twenty-four. Elijah, can you bring down the greater. Uh, bring down the greater than or equal to symbol. In the six years that I've seen this skill taught across all the different sixth grade classes with teachers, the biggest, one of the biggest mistakes I see you guys doing is when you carry the sign down, you flip it somehow. Yeah, Which I don't know how. The total value. <laughs> I don't know. Somehow you guys flip it and then it changes your answers to the problem, which then means you get it wrong. So make sure you always carry it down with the exact way it's set up. So if your variables on this side, bring it down on this side. If your variables on this side, carry it down here and follow the symbol. Keep the symbol the same. Don't try to do any flippy floppy. Okay. Thank you, Skylar. Not normally. Well, okay, so if I have, who can read this to me as an inequality without my uh, very elementary way of describing it with an alligator mouth? Uh, Mari. Yes, so you said it right, Yoshi, you just kind of called it out. But I need numbers that are greater than or equal to 24. Kaylon, what's one? 25. What's another one? 26. 24. Why is it 24? Good. So it could be exactly 24. What's another one? 27. 27. 30. 30. Is that greater than 24? It'd be 121. What do you got? 121. 50. 50. 48. 25 48 and a half. 48 and a half. 200. 48 and a half. 2 1 1. 100. What did you say, Elijah? 48 and a half. 48 and a half. 43. 24. It could be 24, yes. It was already said. But remember, as long as I have that or equal to symbol, it can be that exact number. Can we go on for infinity? Yeah. Honestly, we could. There's like infinite solutions to inequality. Do the three times. It's scary. It's scary, but it's a possible solution. Yeah. All right. You guys have heard enough from me today. Any questions about inequalities? How about online? You guys doing good? You guys. Any questions about the inequalities and how to solve them? Huh? We don't have time for quizzes, sorry. Did I send you a chat list? We weren't going to do one anyway. Oh. Uh, you have a chat now. I have a chat now. Mm -hmm. All good? Awesome. So, um, those of you that are online, that is all we're going to do today. Um, we're going to do more practice with this tomorrow, so keep all of it.